Thank you so much for joining us on the Dwelling Show. I'm your host, Ola Dantes. I've got Chris Prefontaine. What is not, um, this is not his first rodeo here at the Dwelling Show. He's been here before. Hey, Chris, good to see you, sir. Welcome back. Good to see you. Uh, always good to hang out. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming. So, you know, for those who may, may have not heard the last episode, can you just kind of reintroduce yourself um, tell us where you are, what you've been doing, and kind of what you've been doing lately, actually. Yeah, yeah, sure. So I'll give you the 10,000-foot view because I've been at this uh, 30 years a couple months ago, so I don't want to bore everybody with that much info. But I've been, I've touched about every niche you, you possibly could touch, except for syndication, uh, every other niche we've touched. And when I say touched, after the 08 crash, uh, I was forced to redesign what the heck it is I do because I got annihilated. I was signed personally on a lot of loans. Um, that became a no-no going forward. I used a lot of cash. I borrowed money. So all of those coming out of the crash were redesigned. And we, we, what we do today is because of the crash. And that is we only buy on terms. We buy lease purchase, owner financing, or subject to existing financing. And so at this point in time, we control around $80 million, $85 million in real estate around the country, ourselves and our students, because we're still doing our own deals. And uh, those were done with about a total of $2,500 down. If you just pull the whole community. And so we don't use cash with very few exceptions. Um, today, uh, post COVID and all the chaos, as you know, we're doing the same thing. We're actually doubling down right about now because there's a lot of chaos still. Uh, yes, rates are great, but it's tough to qualify. A whole bunch of people hurt by COVID still and by the forbearance agreement. So we're doing a whole bunch of those. The difference all our is, and I'll, I'll wrap up on this and I can go back to any piece. The difference now is we are looking more out of those three options. We love the owner financing and the sub two more so if I had my choice than the sandwich lease, but doesn't mean they're not all relevant. They're probably a third, a third, a third right now. A bunch. Um, I'm taking notes. Um, a bunch. So for somebody who is kind of new to this and doesn't quite understand, you know, buying real estate on, on terms, and maybe that same yeah. person does not have a ton of money, um maybe not a you know maybe not the, the best credit as well um what would you say is kind of like your advice to that person you know want to get into real estate want to really understand some of this somewhat complex strategies um what is the first thing that they need to do actually well i okay so i'd stay before i said that i would stay within the lease purchase realm uh if you're new unless you're in texas in which case you're going to go to the owner financing but I would stay within that. Why? Because you're not taking title and our agreements are written with $10 built into them. And if you're brand new, let me give you an example. Brian uh, O'Neill is one of our better students right now. And he's out in Chicago, 17 years, elevator salesman, never bought or sold a house except for his own personal property. 24 months ago, in about a week, 24 months ago, he found us. Uh, he's done 11 lease purchase agreements. He hasn't done the other two for whatever reason. He stumbled upon 11 lease purchase. He put $10 down on each and his numbers all three paydays because we get paid three ways now. That's the new way, not the old way of one payday. His all three paydays are about 800 and some odd thousand, 825, 850. That's a pretty good deal when he hasn't had any experience. So if you're new, can you mimic that path? Can you follow that? Can you shadow that kind of a path? Yeah, you absolutely can. All right, cool. can we do that? Can we unwrap that deal a little bit? So you said three paydays, you had only $10 down, but got a payout of like 825K, right? Um, K yeah. with a K. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so yep. if I'm listening to this, this is brand new to me. You don't know what you don't know, right? How can I go and try to emulate or maybe replicate what Brian has done? Well, okay. So the short answer, of course, I'm biased to our industry, right? And I'm not our industry, our niche. So the short answer is make sure, make sure, make sure, whether it's me or someone else, you align with someone that's already done it. There's no reason whatsoever in any niche in real estate to go recreate the wheel. The way we buy and sell, Ola, as you know, it's been around since the 1600s. I used to say the 1800s. And then I was reading a Vanderbilt story written by, um, what's his name? Anderson Cooper. It's his family. I was reading it and, I'm, and they're saying in New York City, they were buying and selling on terms. This is before banking. And so this is not new. Go find someone that did, has done these deals and let them help you. Please don't stumble. That's my, my, my best advice. So basically, you, what you're saying is don't try to go out there, do it yourself. But basically, it can be done. You just have to 
align yourself with a mentor, someone that's doing it, and then you can kind of do the deals with them alongside, you know, and they can show you um, the way. That's the ideal, sure. Yeah, but at least find, for goodness sake, find a mentor again, that may, and maybe you can find someone that's a friend, but find someone that has done a few of these and, and then follow their path. But here's the thing. If you're going to do that, if you decide that this niche is for you, to Ola's point, make sure you put the blinders on for three to seven years. I know for some of you might go, what, three to seven years? No, it's not going to take you that long to do a deal. But if you come into this niche with that attitude, you'll have a great experience because I will promise you there'll be speed bumps. We get speed bumps. That's why I love real estate. It's never change. It's always changing rather than never the same. So when you get them, if you have a three to seven year horizon, you're not going to go, go sideways and, and get all bummed out if you have a, a curveball. You're going to say, it's okay. How do I work it out? Let's keep going. Let's pivot and keep going. That's why I say three to seven years. And what is this three pay payday things that you mentioned? Can you kind of elaborate to be on that, please? Sure. Three paydays uh, acts like this. I have a property. I'm going to exit my property on a rent to own basis. Most of the time, let's just, I don't want to give advanced stuff here beyond that, but you're my buyer. You're a buyer. You're not a renter. You're a true buyer, but you couldn't get bank financing because of uh, seasoning, meaning you have a new job, you need time or you're self-employed or your credit needs time to improve. Now, Ola, right now, because of COVID, I just read this like two weeks ago. There's been about a 72% increase in people starting their own business because of COVID. They said, the heck with that corporate or the heck with that commuter, the heck with that flying around. I'm going to start my own business. Great. Good news for us in this niche. Those buyers that I say they come in with payday one and they have a non-refundable down payment. Those buyers are ideal for us. They had a corporate job. They have money. They just, they're not bankable right now. They got to go prove themselves for two years in the marketplace. So payday one, down payment. Payday two difference between what I pay the seller or pay the seller's underlying debt when I'm doing a sandwich lease or an owner financing or any one of our deals. And then what I collect from my buyer is going to be more than that. So I have a little spread there every month. And then payday three is great because it's the markup in price when I cash it out two, three, four, five, seven years down the road. But it's also all of the principal pay down that I realized throughout that entire deal because there's underlying debt or there's owner financing and either one of those gives me principal pay down. Um, so those are pretty lucrative. Let me give you a number. Our number, all three paydays, is seventy-five thousand. Our students range from forty-five thousand to two hundred fifty thousand. We're we're kind of on a lower end just because of our low lower price range. But those are lucrative deals. How many of those you need to do in a year if you're brand new? Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are those are those are pretty exciting actually. So um, before before we kind of get into like the mentorship, um, perhaps let's let's kind of I want to dig in just a little bit more. So sure. a sandwich, a sandwich lease, um, a, a, a sandwich strategy and a lease option. What is, mm -hmm. what are, what are the main two differences? Um, yeah, good point. They're just interchangeable because a lease option is how I'm going to secure the property. But the, the word sandwich comes up. Why? Because when I secure the property with a lease purchase agreement, which we have all the forms are done for you, that's with my seller. Then I'm going to sell it to my buyer and I'm in the middle. So the two pieces of bread are the, the, the seller and buyer and I'm the, uh, the meat or the vegetables, whatever you prefer in the middle. And I control the deal. And that, that begs the, the question, well, how do I secure myself? If I'm not on title, how do I secure myself? And how do I do this if I'm not licensed? Because I'm actually going to be on title. I'm going to record a notice of option or a memorandum of real estate. And I'm on title. I control the property. I have an equitable interest in the property. It's pretty neat. Fascinating. Fascinating. So if um, I want to kind of reach out to you guys, join your program, what does that look like? I'm just kind of curious. Um, there's a couple of different things. So I'm big on free. So I'd rather have people go to our free resources, get our book. I, I'll even offer, make sure I do at the end, I'll offer your, your listeners our free book. And I mean, I'll ship it. It's a hard copy. I'd rather people read that or go to YouTube or both and then say, oh, cool, I like what I saw. I, that's a niche for me versus, you know, trying to jump you into a program. Our, our bestseller, Real Estate on Your Terms, uh, for example, uh, will give you that book. I, we'll ship it and we'll, I'll find out a way to do that before we're done talking to you. And then um, if you go to YouTube, just put in Smart Real Estate Coach on the search. And there's over 100, there might be 140 by now of deal structure videos. So you can see the three days. And it's not all fluff. It's the good, the bad, and the ugly. We, we just expose everything. We don't edit it, the, the real deals. And you decide if that's for you. That's all for free. And then you can, you can dig in further. 
Okay, interesting. So you also mentioned something in the beginning of our conversation. You say you guys have done pretty much everything um, in real estate with the exception of syndication. So how have you managed to not only juggle, you know, kind of all these different strategies, but also how have you been successful in really uh, niching down on kind of this um, buying on terms? I'm just kind of curious how you've done this um, over the years. You said 30 yeah. years, right? Yeah, but okay. So the, the pivot though was in 2012 and you might say, well, wait a minute, the crash was in eight. You pivoted in 12. What, what, what where were the four years? The four years were me digging out working with banks, working with sellers. It was ugly. It took four years, pretty much a half week to a full week of negotiating workouts and all that. And boy, did I learn some lessons. And so the the terms niche came about because of that. But you said, you know, how was I successful in this one? How did it come about? That, real simple. I moved in, I moved from a $2 million home into a one bedroom apartment when I got beat up. And that allowed me to not have baggage, to not have the steam, the proverbial steamroller behind me with debt and to build a business with a clear head. And that six years later, and now we're, we're eight or nine years later, but six years later, we had built pretty much a, a monster business that was uh, uh, on its own, self-surviving on its own. So I, I guess that was a long answer, but all that to say, if you're out there and you're trying to do a deal or you're in real estate and you bought 10, 15, 20 courses, I hear this all the time. It's okay, don't beat yourself up, but do make a choice in the new year to do what we talked about early in the show. And that is find someone that you can relate to, that you, that you can, an initiative that you can relate to, and then commit with those blinders on. Uh, and you'll have the same experience we did. It's not magic. It's committing and getting rid of all the crap that was in the past. I had to do it and you can do it yourself. I like, I like the way you, you mentioned like the three to seven years, because a lot of people kind of think, you know, they watch a seminar or maybe these days now watch a YouTube video, like, oh, this guy's doing real estate. Yeah. I can, I can go start doing it. And then, you know, kind of get the same results in a few months, not really understanding that this person isn't an overnight success. They've been doing this grinding for, for years before, before you saw that video <laughs> and you probably maybe just saw the good part and not all of that. So I really, really like that you, you made that um, different, you know, just that, that fact. So, yeah, and all I agree. I used to, I used to say three only, by the way, and I probably said that in your last show. I used to always say three, 36 months, 36 months. And then I had Brian Tracy, who I'm sure everybody knows on my show, and he's 80 something years old. And I gave him my philosophy on that. And publicly on my show, he said, no, 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 you're wrong. It's at least seven years. And he said, here's why, Chris. He said, I've been broke. I've built big businesses. He said, it's going to take two or three years and you are going to suck. And then two or three years, you're going to feel like you got it and you're getting paid okay. It's the last two or three years that you're going to feel like, wow, I made it. And I, I made it beyond what I thought. That's because you put the blinders on for so long. So I like better what he said than just 36. So now I give it a range. I love Brian Tracy, by the way. I just think he's, he's an absolute legend. Yeah, he's awesome. I, I, yeah, I've watched so many of his, his YouTube, like his sales stuff, even though I'm not... I'm not in sales, but we are all selling every day. So I, I love oh, I just talking love. to people. We're selling. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. We can keep, you know, going on and on, uh, but we're definitely, definitely dwelling into the quick rounds. So There's going to be quick questions, quick answers. You ready, sir? I am. All right. First question. What makes you, Chris, unique? What is that differentiating factor that separates you from the next guy or the next girl? And since you've already been on the show, you could just talk about yourself or, you know, wicked smile your business? Well, uh, okay, but they're one and the same, really good point, because the difference is 30 years, uh, all of it, not roses. And so why would you try to go reinvent the wheel? Um, I'll help you avoid, not all of it, <laughs> it's not reality, but I'll help you avoid a lot of it. And be careful if it's not me, that someone out there has experience. I love it, I love it. Um, what was the last book um, that you read? What was the one thing that you picked out from that book? You know, um, I just finished for the second time Shoe Dog. Um, the, it's hard to say one thing. There's a lot of struggles in that and there's a lot of lessons and it. It's kind of my style, like candid and here's what happened. So that was the last big one that comes to mind. But that this changes every time. So if I'm on a new show, it's like, oh, there's another book because I'm in a different spot mentally. But right now, that's what came to mind. Yeah, that's a great book. I, I believe they're making that into a Netflix film, actually. Oh, that'd be um, sweet. Yeah. I mean, Phil Knight is just, yeah, it's just great. Um, final awesome. question. You're, you're busy, you know, do, doing a lot. Um, what do you do for fun these days? 
Um, at this at uh, this stage, I'm 55. My wife and I have been married 35 years. We have two grandkids, so we're all about creating experiences now. Uh, that's literally what I focus on. So it's not about the money. It's about making the money to do the things that money can't buy, create experiences with the family. Those don't die, right? Those experiences don't die. So that's what we're all about. Where uh, we found a piece of land uh, up in an area we like in the mountains, and we're building a house there and creating some family experiences. Oh, that is amazing. That is amazing. I know you kind of touched on this a little bit, but if there's somebody listening and thinking, hey, I really want to get connected with Chris and his team, what's that one single resource people can go to and get to know you guys better? Yeah, besides YouTube, because you will get to know the family there. It's, we're all in the videos, but um, here's, here's what I'll do. Although we don't have a, the automations being redone, but if they say they were they heard you and I on your show, uh, they just email support at smartrealestatecoach.com. I'll go ahead and get them out two books, actually. They're both on Amazon, but I'll save you the money and I'll ship it. And that is Real Estate on Your Terms. It's a hardcover book. And then Deal Structure Overtime. I don't even know if you've seen this one. This is a, a book that goes into the nuances behind the deals that you see on YouTube. It's like behind the scenes, all the nitty gritty, the good, the bad, and the not so great. And that, that's in a book and it's on Amazon, but I'm going to ship you both of those. Just say that you heard us on the show and send that to support at uh, smartrealestatecoach.com. Grace, thank you so much. Really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.